So welcome, Year 7s. It's so lovely to see you. I hope you enjoyed the walk down to the cathedral in the fresh air. It's a bit hot out there, isn't it? Mm. So today we're going to be using our prayer books, and I'm so glad to see you all with them. Do you know the acknowledgement of country yet? No, but it's in the back of their books. Is it in the back of your books? Yes. How exciting. So the first thing we do when we gather in chapel is we give thanks for the land that we're worshipping on. So I say, Na la kadich nunga mort, kn kadak nija buja. We acknowledge the Nunga people as the original custodians of this land. And then we're going to turn to page 35 in our prayer books. If you can see there's little red print in your prayer book, that's called a rubric. And does yours say this on page 35 at the top? The minister greets the people and reads one or more of the following. Does yours say that? Good. So I choose one of these and I read it to you. When we gather like this, we want to feel part of something. We come to church to pray and to talk to God and to listen to God. We also join together in that. We gather for that. So when I choose one of these to read to you, I have a look at you. I have a think and a, maybe a listen to what God's telling me. I think about what I want to tell you today. And most often, my favourite is this one. You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. I like this one because it reminds you of how precious you are. Every single one of you individually. You're precious in the hearts of your families and your friends and in this school and your teachers, to me, but also to God. God is that divine presence that is around us and within us in the world and it is a loving presence that sees God in you. So that makes us all just a little bit divine too. And that's what I like to remind you of when you come to chapel. Then we turn our page and we say a prayer together. So it's at the top. So let us pray. Gracious God, we humbly thank you for life and health and safety, for freedom to work, leisure to rest, and for all that is beautiful in creation and human life. But above all, we praise you for our Saviour Jesus Christ, for his death and resurrection, for the gift of your spirit, and for the hope of sharing in your glory. Fill our hearts with all joy and peace in believing. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. When we speak these words together, a couple of things happen. Maybe a few things happen. When we pray together, we join into something. And when we say the same words like we've just done, we listen to each other and we end up saying the words together while we're listening to each other and we're thinking about what we're saying. One of my favorite things to do with you is to sing because when we sing, we all come into unison and your lovely music teacher will tell you that when we all sing together, our heartbeats can actually sync up with each other. We get that really beautiful feeling of community. So while we're worshipping, we're being reminded that we're not alone. We're not alone because God is with us, but also because we're here together. 
And when we give thanks like we did in that prayer, we remember to be grateful, which most of the time uh, helps us to have a better outlook on life. When we give thanks for the things we have, it can make us feel a bit better about how our day is going. So usually, before we started all this, we would have come in with a song. And today, we're going to sing now, and we're going to sing from the songbooks, which are on the ends of your chairs. Has everyone got one? They're just on the end there. So if you don't have one, make sure you, everyone's got one. Good work. And we're going to sing Be Still, and it's on page 12. So if you don't know this one, just see if you can pick up the tune. When we hear songs that we don't know, it's good not to just write them off, but to maybe get used to them. And if you know them or you think you can have a crack at it, sing along with us. I love having Mr. McBride play the piano for me. Please be seated and we'll have a Bible reading. Today we have a very short Bible reading. So there's a prayer we can say that I will read before I read the Bible. And it's on page 36. Thank you, Father, for making yourself known to us and showing the way of salvation through faith in your Son. We ask you now to teach and encourage us through your word so that we may be ready to serve you. For the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now, this is how we go. First of all, I'll tell you which book it's from. And this is a reading from the book of Mark. The Pharisees came and began to argue with him, and that him is Jesus, asking him for a sign from heaven to test him. And he sighed deeply in his spirit and said, why does this generation ask for a sign? Truly, I tell you, no sign will be given to this generation. And he left them, and getting into the boat again, he went across to the other side. At the end of the reading, I say, hear the word of the Lord, and you respond with, thanks be to God. So this reading which is very small, 
comes from the Gospel of Mark, and that tells the story of Jesus' life. And this tiny little part of the story comes straight after Jesus has performed an amazing miracle. Jesus has fed thousands of people with a very small amount of food, loaves and fishes, and there is so much food that there's some left over. And Jesus feeds the people because he loves them. He sees that they are hungry. They have been with him all day listening and learning. And out of love, he feeds them. These types of miracles Jesus has become known for. Now the Pharisees are the leaders of the church. They're like uh, the church officials or even similar to leaders of governments. And they've got lots of problems with Jesus. They've got lots of problems with the way he's teaching and what he's teaching. They're worried that he is not teaching the law as they know it. Most importantly, they don't know who he is. The Jewish people have been promised a great Messiah to come and save them from the situation they're in. And they think Jesus might be this person, but he's not doing it the way they expected. He's doing it in peace and love and healing and he's not always following the law to the letter. So these church leaders come to him to argue with him, which is something when we, the word argue is not fight with, but it's more discuss the scriptures and his interpretation and to have a long theological discussion, which Jesus was very good at. And they say, We want a sign so that you can prove who you are to us. If you really are the Messiah, you need to prove this to us. This is a test. And Jesus has had just about enough of these tests and this arguing. Because right before they ask for this sign, he has fed thousands of people. If only the church leaders were watching him and trusting him and listening to his words they would see that he is the son of God, the person come to show them a different way to live, a better, more loving way to live, a way of feeding people and healing people. But they want another miracle. They're not satisfied. And Jesus has had enough. And he says to them, why are you asking for a sign? I'm not giving you one. And if you keep going like this, you're not going to get any miracles. You're not going to experience this from me. I was thinking about these words today because I think it happens to be Valentine's Day. Has anyone done anything for Valentine's Day? Yeah, good. So we did a something, a little something last night in the cathedral and we lit some candles and we talked about love and relationships and all those kinds of things. And I think when we have to talk about love and relationships, we shouldn't just talk about boyfriends and girlfriends or wives and husbands. We should also talk about friendship and families and all those really important types of love. And I don't know if any of you ever had that feeling when you're just feeling a little bit taken for granted, a little bit used. You know, when your friends are asking for something a bit too much or someone expects you to do something, which takes a lot of energy, and you're done with giving and giving, and you're feeling a little bit like they just like you or they're just spending time with you because of what you can give them or what you can do for them. It's an uncomfortable feeling and it can make us angry just like Jesus. So I think our reminder for Valentine's Day is that sometimes we're gonna feel a little bit taken for granted by people we love. And sometimes we're gonna take the people we love for granted. We're gonna expect or test them. Do you really like me? If you really liked me, you'd buy me A. If you really liked me, you'd do this for me. That kind of testing when we don't trust someone, when we don't watch their actions uh, and get to know them as a person and know their hearts. That kind of testing is not helpful and it can be unhealthy. So today I want to encourage you to be kind to your friends, 
to not take them for granted, maybe say thanks for something they've done for you. To give freely of yourselves, but trust that your friends and your family value you for just you, not for what you can do for them. And you might remind your friends and family of that when you see them today. So the next part of our service is to do some praying. Sometimes before we pray, we do something which is called a confession. And that is on page 38 of your prayer book. Sometimes confession can feel like we're just admitting that we've done bad stuff. And sometimes that can make us feel a bit sad or bad. That's not what confession is for. Confession is for laying down the heavy weight that you are carrying around. Maybe that you're feeling a bit guilty about something or you haven't done something and it's weighing on your mind. Or maybe you weren't really sweet to the person who dropped you off at school or who said goodbye to you in the morning. All those tiny little niggles and the big ones too, when we come to confession, we put that weight down. We hand it over to God. And the promise of God is that God will always love us and that there's forgiveness there. And the weight is lifted when we put it down and when we hear those words that it's okay, you're still loved, you're forgiven. A lot of Christians confess every Sunday. Uh, Every time I do a service, we have some sort of confession. We do change when we talk about our feelings. We do change when we talk about what's making us feel bad. We do change over time. But because we're human beings and we're never going to be perfect, it never hurts to do an extra confession. So, on the bottom of page 38... Let us now confess our sins to Almighty God. Heavenly Father, you have loved us with an everlasting love, but we have broken your holy laws and left undone what we ought to have done. We are sorry for our sins and turn away from them. For the sake of your Son who died for us, forgive us, cleanse us and change us by your Holy Spirit. Enable us to live for you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, there's a lit- some words of absolution here. These ones can be read by anyone. It doesn't have to be a priest, and I'm going to read them to you now. God desires that none should perish, but that all should turn to Christ and live. In response to his call, we acknowledge our sins. God pardons those who humbly repent and truly believe the gospel. Therefore, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Amen. So now we're going to bow and pray, bow our heads and pray. Loving God, we bring before you today the world in all its troubles. Bless people with love for each other. Show us how to care for each other and forgive each other. Help us to make peace instead of war. Remind us of your transformative love that makes the world a better place. Help us to see that in the end, love is always better than hate. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray today for our church, for the people who visit the cathedral, the ones who come to pray, and the ones who come to sit and have some peaceful time. We pray that everyone who visits the cathedral today will feel the love of God in their lives. We pray that God's love will inspire them to be kind to the people around them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our school and for all the schools in Australia. We pray that we will remain healthy and able to learn together. We pray for Anglican Schools Commission Schools for our principal, Mrs. Campbell, and for our staff. Bless us and remind us to be kind to each other on Valentine's Day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray for the lonely, the unwell, and those in special need. Loving God, we pray for our friends and family who are struggling with sadness or anxiety. Show us how to support them and remind them that they are not alone. We pray for those who are sick and ask for healing, comfort, and recovery. We pray for families who are separated due to quarantine, closed borders, and illness. Keep them company in their isolation and remind them of the love that surrounds them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died. We give thanks for their lives and trust that they are free from pain and suffering. May light perpetual shine upon them. May their souls rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. We're almost at the end of our service. We say two important prayers before we finish our prayers. One of them is the Lord's Prayer and the other is the school prayer, which I'm hoping you've got in your books too. So we'll start with the Lord's Prayer, which we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And we say our school prayer together. <clears throat> Almighty and eternal God, we pray for our school we pray that we may have the bravery of St George to stand up for what is right. Grant us the wisdom to live our lives to the truth and glory of God that we find in Jesus Christ. Give us strength to embrace your rule of justice and love, that we may be good news to the poor and oppressed, serving all those in need. May we journey through life filled with the grace of God and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We are on page 40, but I think we're going to sing. So before we do our conclusion to the service, you've all been magnificently quiet and peaceful and you've joined in so beautifully and I really appreciate it. Sometimes we don't have to be quiet in the cathedral there's something really important you have to learn um, if you want to do it right when you're here. And it's one of Mrs. Campbell's favourite songs. It's called The Trees of the Field. What page is it on? Page 13. Now, there's a trick to it, and it's not in your books, so you've got to remember this part. At the very end, we sing the same thing three times. We do. We sing the same thing three times, which is great for you because uh, you get to repeat, so you get to learn the words. But on the very last time, we shout, oi. So I want you guys to stand up for me. Now, we are being live streamed back to the school. I'm on a microphone, you're not. I want them to hear you yelling, oi. You brave enough? You got this? We're about to practice, but not the singing. We're just going to yell oi. Right. So on the count of three, are you ready? One, two, three. Oi! Mrs. Campbell? She's not happy. Got to be louder. Can you do louder? Really fill your lungs. And I know you're wearing masks, but don't worry about those. You ready? One, two, three. Oi! Yep, she's happy. Well done. Good job. So, we're going to sing The Trees of the Field. It's on page 13. So we've got two little verses which we sing three times. On the third one, I'll give you the signal. Yeah, and we're going to yell oi. Maestro. <laughs>
you can remain standing and we're going to say our final prayer, which is on page 40. Loving God, we thank you for hearing our prayers, for feeding us with your word and encouraging us in our meeting together. Take us and use us to love and serve you and all people in the power of your spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the God of peace equip you with everything good for doing his will, working in you what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. That was wonderful. And I think maybe if you sit down for a minute and your teachers will sort you out for going. <laughs>